This is Peeps, an app on the Ornament and Crime stock firmware. It's used to generate envelopes. Envelopes can loop, can be turned into LFOs, and even can become oscillators. In this video, I'm going to run through how it works and then show you basic and more complex patches to really get the most out of it. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with a quick review of the user interface for Peaked. Peaked is composed of four envelope generators, A, B, C, and D. We go into the menu, you can scroll between the envelopes using the left encoder, so A, B, C, and D. And as you scroll, you see that the menu is changing to display the current parameter set for that envelope. As usual with ornament and crime apps, you scroll up and down through the settings using the right encoder, and then you press the right encoder to change that settings value. And if you edit some of the settings, new menu options appear underneath. For example, the Euclidean trigger length. We'll cover that later. You can edit the type of envelope using this first parameter here. The Peaked app supports quite a large number of envelope types, from the standard Attack Decay, Attack Decay release, up to much more complex shapes and looping envelopes. You can edit the type of envelope and then press the left encoder to edit the actual segments of the envelope. So here we have envelope A with a standard Attack Decay Sustain Release envelope shape. So I turn the right encoder to edit the segments of envelope A, and you see the value is set here. The values represent the length of time that that segment is going to take, except for the sustain level, which is the actual output level of CV. You can quickly edit these by doing the up and down buttons to increase or decrease by 32. So if you just wanted to quickly bring attack down to a low value, a couple of quick presses on the down button will do that for you, saves you having to turn the knob an awful lot. If you want to make fine tunes, you can just press the right encoder and turn, and as you can see, the shape here is changing in response to my edits. While you're in this mode, you can of course scroll between the different envelope types, and you'll be on the last parameter you edited. This is great if you want to change the same parameter, but across all four envelopes, just navigate to that parameter, make your change, and then use the left encoder to jump between the envelopes. Notice also how when I scroll between envelope shapes, the segments change shape. Some of them have square edges, some of them are very curved, some of them have exponential, some of them are not. You edit this by setting the shape in the attack, decay, and release sections. So for example, lin means linear. If we press the left encoder, we now see that the attack segment of the envelope is a straight line. It also has more complex shapes. This is a medium dipper. The medium dipper, and it looks better, it's easier to see this if I just expand out the length of the attack segment, goes up and down and up, a bit like a roller coaster. So if you wanted to create a lot more movement, perhaps you're modulating some parameter very slowly, use these type of envelope shapes. To be useful, an envelope has to be triggered, and so we have to give a trigger input to each of the four envelopes. Now you can choose to trigger the envelopes with whichever of the four inputs here you want. I have envelope A, B, C, and D all triggering off trigger one. If you go to the bottom of the menu, you can map the CV inputs to any of a number of parameters, which will allow you to vary the behavior of the envelopes quite considerably. Now let's wire up a basic patch to illustrate how to actually trigger envelopes and how they can be used to modulate your sound. PAMS is going to be used to generate the clocks, as always, into Ornament and Crime. The envelopes are output of these four outputs here. I'm going to use the MCO oscillator from ALM as my sound source, and I'm going to use ripples as a combination of filter and voltage controlled amplifier, so a VCF and a VCA. I'm using Mimetic Digitalis from Noise Engineering as a source of uh, pitch information into the MCO. I'll start by wiring a trigger into trigger input one from Pam's new workout. Now when I hit play, you'll see that the envelopes are triggering. This graphic illustrates the envelope shape as it progresses through the stages and the corresponding CV voltage being generated. Let me just slow it down so you can see it. Now when a trigger comes in, the envelope plays, and you see the corresponding CV voltage. Now as you can hear, when the envelope is triggered, it opens up the VCA, allowing the sound to come through the filter and out into the output stage. Let's wire in uh, the filter stage. So what we're going to do is use envelope B to ping the frequency. 
Do you hear that? Envelope A is triggering the VCA to open, so the gate opens and you can hear the sound of the oscillator. Envelope B is then pinging the filter, so it's sending a control voltage into the frequency CV input here on ripples, which is pinging the filter, creating that characteristic filter sweeping sound as the note plays. Now while this is playing, of course, I can go in and edit these envelopes live. So let's edit envelope A, which controls the gate, in other words, the sound from the oscillator. There's a very quick attack, a much slower attack. I can go in and change the envelope type here. This has a multiple attack phase. Creates a very different sound. I can go and edit envelope B for the filter. Let's edit the decay side. Oh, nice. Hear that filter? Now, say we wanted the second envelope to be a little bit later than the first one. We want a little bit of that sound to come through, and then I want the filter envelope to open. So I want a delay on the trigger for envelope B. To set this up, let's use the trigger delay mode. Use the right encoder to go to trigger delay mode and set it to Q. Now, when we scroll down, we can edit the delay in milliseconds and indeed seconds for how long after the trigger arrives envelope B will fire. So now we have it set. So for example, here I have 70 milliseconds. So an envelope will fire 70 milliseconds after the trigger is received here. So we'll have a chance to hear a little bit of that note. Let's hear what happens. Now you hear the filter is pinging just a little bit after the note is played. Adds a very different effect to it. Of course, I can go in now and change to a much more plucky filter. Or we can make it a much slower filter. Open up the delay here. Now if I combine the Mimetic Digitalis into this patch, I'm going to send pitch information from sequencer number one output, uh, which I've dialed in to just have a short four note sequence. And I'm going to trigger it using trigger output two, from PAMS, and it's just going to cycle around on that row. There you saw how I can go in and dynamically edit the envelope shape while playing a melody just to see what impact it has on the sound. So far, we've been looking at triggering envelopes using automatic gates, gates generated by a clock. But what about generating envelopes using manual triggers? We could use this as a performance tool. If we were playing a patch and we wanted to trigger something manually, there's nothing stopping us doing that. All you need is some source of manual gate triggers. And for that, I'm going to use my modular maritime DECA, which you've seen in other videos I've done. This lets me generate gate sources here. First of all, envelope A, as before, is going into the VCA, so we will hear the oscillator when the clock arrives. Now, let's look at envelope B. I'm going to set this up as a very slow filter sweep. So you see I've got a decay and attack as very high values here, 200 and, oh, 256 each almost. But I need a trigger for envelope B. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to trigger envelope B using trigger input two. So I'm going to set trigger input two to the output of this gate here. And now when I press the button here to trigger the gate, the envelope fires. It'll take a little while to ramp itself up, but it's going to go across the full envelope size and ramp back down on the decay. And because it's been triggered manually, other envelope triggers, for example, the uh, gate trigger coming in here to trigger the note playing have no impact on it. 
So let's wire the output of envelope B into the frequency CV input on ripples. And now when we hit this gate, we will get a filter sweep effect. And I can re-trigger it, of course, whenever I want to. Let's do the same thing with envelope C. We'll go in here and edit envelope C. This one I've set up to have a more complex shape using those complex envelope shapes that are available to you in the Peaked app. I'm going to trigger this envelope using this gate here. And we'll connect this envelope C into, oh, I don't know, we'll try resonance. And let's see what happens when we patch it to resonance on the filter. Now remember, we can trigger each of these independently and the notes are still going to keep playing. Oh, the resonance goes up there. I'm triggering them separately. I'll just trigger envelope C. And now I can trigger the filter. This was a very simple example of how you can use slow moving envelopes with manual triggers to create more performance movement in your patches. Now let's take a look at envelope shapes and some of the things you might want to do when configuring your envelopes. For this, I'm going to use the key step and I've wired the pitch information to the one volt per octave input on the oscillator and the gate output of the key step goes into trigger one. And as you can see, when I hit a gate, it triggers the envelopes. Now let's see what happens when I play notes faster than it takes for the envelope to decay. So we have a fairly short attack here and we have a fairly long decay. Notes can arrive and gates will arrive while that decay is playing. What's going to happen? As you can see, when we are in the decay phase, I can send in more notes, but the envelope is not re-triggered. That's because we have not set it to accept the new gate coming in to re-trigger the envelope. And we have three to play with here. The attack reset, the attack fall, and the decay release reset. By default, that's set to none. So any gate that arrives when you're in that decay phase of the envelope is ignored completely. I'm going to set this to SP. This will reset the segment and phase of the envelope. Now watch what happens when a gate arrives from playing a note while we're in the decay phase here in the envelope. You can see it resets to the decay start. It doesn't reset to the start of the attack, just to the decay piece. And then the envelope plays out. You can also choose to have the segment and phase reset and have the level go down to zero using the SLP setting. But as you can hear, it creates a nasty click because the level is going to zero when I reset the start of the decay phase and then the volume goes back up again because the CV jumps, the envelope value jumps straight up to what's shown on the display. So this mode may be something you want, but it actually just can create clicks. Another mode to play with is just the phase reset mode. In other words, it just says, it doesn't matter what the level is, I'm just going to reset the decay phase. You may like the effect of that, because what's happening here is the decay of the envelope is still happening, but we're resetting the phase. So later notes are going to play with the volume of that phase of the envelope. In other words, as this envelope is slowly playing out, it's slowly decaying it, but I can play more notes inside it. The same thing can be done on the attack side. We can go up here to the attack reset, set it to SP. And now the envelope will reset as you would expect every time a new gate arrives. I'd like to show you how you can also create very, very slow envelopes. If you're into making ambient music or drones, you want envelopes that move very slowly indeed. Now, typically, when we trigger an envelope, it triggers pretty quickly. 
but you're able to go in and set a multiplier using the attack and decay and release multi parameters. These go anywhere from one up to 8192 and they go up in powers of two, so you don't have to scroll 8192 times. If I set the attack molt on envelope A, which I've connected as usual to my VCA, and on envelope B, I leave that as normal, so that's the filter, there's envelope B and there's envelope A, we should hear a very slow build up in the sound. I'm going to use this to generate the gate. You hear the sound building up and then decaying away. So now what I've done is I've set the attack and decay multiplier on envelope A for the VCA to 32 and 16. So it'll ramp up and then decay away. And on the filter envelope, which is a standard attack decay filter, I've set the multiplier for the attack to be one. So the filter opens up straight away and the decay multiplier to 128. So the filter will slowly close then as that envelope ramps down. Let's take a listen and have a watch the filter envelope here, envelope B. I'm going to trigger the gate now. You see this envelope slowly decaying away and the filter is slowly closing as the amplitude also of the oscillator goes down. So with these multipliers, it's possible to create envelopes that last for tens of minutes. Now, in the interest of time and your patience, I am not going to make a 15 to 20 minute long envelope filter sweep. I think that would just be a little bit self-indulgent in any video. But take my word for it, you can make some very, very long envelopes, which you can, of course, modulate the time of. And those are ideal if you need to slowly move something in your patch. One of the fun things you can do with the ornament in crime is create looping envelopes. Say we had an attack, decay, sustain, release envelope, which would be the classic envelope shape. Now to loop the entire envelope, we'll use the attack, decay, release, looping three mode, A, D, or L3. Once the release phase finishes, the envelope restarts. But say I want to just the attack, decay, sustain phase to loop and then when I lift the key, I want the release phase to play out. So it'll loop the first three phases and then play out the release phase when I'm done. For that, I can use the ADL2R mode. Little confusing acronym, but basically what this does is it will loop, as you can see, the attack, decay and sustain phases. And when I lift my finger up, the release phase plays out. Let's just shorten the decay phase and go over to the release phase and just really increase that. Now we'll be able to hear it very clearly. There's those looping. Okay, let's put a looping envelope into practical use. What I'm going to do is set up envelope A as usual to open up the VCA, the amplifier, so we can hear the oscillator sound. I'm going to go over to envelope B, change the envelope loop mode to ADL2. So when I press, see we're getting this looping mode. And I'm going to patch that into our filter. So envelope two into the frequency. Now that is a really cool effect. We are now looping the envelope as an LFO into the filter. Of course, we can completely change this envelope shape. Go back in here, change it to be a multi-phase envelope. And you hear now how it is looping all of these phases. And then when I lift my finger off, we get that closing out release phase, which then closes the filter. That is a really cool example of how we can use looping envelopes as LFOs to tweak the sound that we're playing with. One thing we haven't looked at is how to control the amplitude of the envelope. 
Right now, this envelope is going up to maximum, for example, for the filter, and decaying down to zero. But what if we wanted to adjust how much the envelope is being opened? In other words, what CV values are being generated? I'm on envelope B here. I'm going to scroll down to amplitude. And you can see here that the amplitude value is at 127. I can reduce that down 41. And we get a much more gentle effect on the filter. But what if, as we were playing, I wanted that to gradually die away? So I want another envelope to modulate the amplitude of the looping envelope, which I'm sending in to the filter and ripples. Envelope C is here. And what I'm going to do is set envelope C to be a slow decay and a fast attack. So let's go in and change the shape. We'll set it to an attack decay release. Same trigger as trigger one. We won't use anything Euclidean here. And the decay shape, let's use Medip just so we have a fairly different size and shape to it. And then we are going to patch the output of envelope C and I'm going to patch it into, say, the CV2 input, which I'm going to go into envelope B, which remembers our filter looping envelope. And I'm going to CV map CV2 to be amplitude. Scroll down to amplitude. Now, what happens is, as the envelope is being generated and played, the ornamenting crime is sampling the input here on CV2 and will add it to whatever value you have defined here in your amplitude setting for this envelope. I'm going to make it a pretty quick attack and it will slowly decay away. Now let's watch what happens. Do you hear how the effect of the envelope on the filter is now degrading slowly over time? That's because we're using envelope C to modulate the amplitude of envelope B, which is looping and going into the filter. Now let's look at how we would set envelope D to modulate the timing on envelope B using the CV1 input. I've set it to be in ADR looping mode. It's still triggered off the same trigger from the key step. And the attack shapes and decay shapes are those complex LT dippers and medium dippers, which look something like this. The output from envelope D goes into CV1 input. I've set envelope D to be an inverted envelope. So instead of slowly rising, it's going to start at its maximum and drop. What this means is when we go over here to envelope B's input, I'm going to CV map CV1 to ADR. So those values are now going to be scaled by the input value coming from envelope D. Let's take a look. You see how they're dynamically changing? Because this envelope is sending in new values here to CV1, causing this to be dynamically rescaled as we're playing. Don't think of the envelopes as just simple envelopes. Think of them as complex multi-stage shape generators, which can be looped and cross-patched into each other to create complex evolving rhythms and modulation effects. Obviously, if we can have a looping envelope as an LFO, the very next thing you're going to think is, can I make it oscillate into audio rates? And it turns out you can, but it is possible to turn the envelope generators in peaked into oscillators that oscillate up into the audio rates, which we can use in our patches. First of all, I'm going to work with envelope D. Envelope D is set to a very simple attack decay loop. That's the first thing is you need to have a looping envelope. We're going to trigger it from trigger four, but we only need the trigger to get it running. The first trigger starts the looping envelope. I'm going to have the attack shapes as linear because I'm just going to create a simple triangle waveform is make sure the max loops is zero, which means loop forever when you receive a gate. The other very important setting is gate high. If gate high is yes, it means it will automatically hold the gate high. It's as if you were pressing a key down or there was a gate arriving here. 
Now, I have a very simple envelope set up with attack and decay set to 64, and I've patched the output of envelope D into my oscilloscope on my data over here, and we're going to see the waveform that gets generated. I'll send in that starter gate from Pam's new workout, but I can stop Pam's from sending in any gate. I can even disconnect it, and we see that the envelope here is now cycling. If you look here on the oscilloscope, we're getting the beginnings of an audio waveform, but really what we need to do is go in and reduce the attack and decay rate. Now we can see on the oscilloscope that we've got a triangle waveform. And what we can see is by incrementing the decay rate, I'm tuning by a semitone. G5 sh sharp, G5, F sharp 5. That means if we can send in CV values, we can now change the pitch of this oscillator. So let's go to our CV mapping and change CV4 to map to the decay time. Let's send in some test values from our friend, the push over here. I'm going to patch it into CV4. Patch this in here, we'll start it. When I turn the knob on the push, to send a control voltage in. Okay, now we've got the beginnings of an oscillator we can do something with. But of course, what do we do with an oscillator? We typically send it through a filter and a VCA. So let's set that up as well. Now I've set up the standard VCA and filter patch using uh, envelope A as the output, like we did before in our previous examples. But this time, the oscillator is going to be envelope D in oscillation mode by looping it very fast. And we've just done that tuning exercise earlier. I'll sell clock information from PAMS to clock Mimetic Digitalis. In turn, sequencer one on Mimetic is going to send CV values into CV4. And remember, we mapped CV4 to be the decay time. So by varying the decay time, we're varying the pitch of the note. The greater the CV value, the lower the pitch of the note. And then Mimetic Digitalis will also generate a trigger on the output whenever it generates a new CV value, which we will use to clock envelope A. And if you remember, envelope A, well, we'll set it to an attack to decay sustain release. We can go in here and edit it if we want. We might just reduce the decay time down and increase the release. Now, when we hit play, so what if you don't want your envelopes to trigger on every trigger pulse? For example, you want to introduce some randomness or some unpredictability to when envelopes get fired. Every time a trigger arrives, it's compared to a filter pattern. And if the pattern allows the trigger to pass, the envelope is fired. And if the pattern doesn't, the envelope doesn't get fired. So we'll start with our standard patch. We'll use envelope A to trigger the oscillator output on the VCA over here in ripples. But now let's change things so that not every time a trigger arrives, the envelope opens. So I'm going to scroll down here in the menu to the Euclidean length. I'm going to set this to eight. This, when you set it to any value greater than zero, creates a whole new menu. These little bars here represent the Euclidean trigger pattern. I'm going to click on it using the right encoder. There are two values that you can play with. The fill here is the number of triggers that will be mapped into that length, and the offset is how much it gets rotated. So let's set this to five fill and zero offset. And the length is eight, which means five out of every eight triggers will be sent through this filter. Now let's hit play and see what happens. Do you hear how different that is? Every time the trigger arrives, it's compared to one of the gates. And you can see on the little display here, if the gate is present, the trigger goes through. 
and if the gate is not present, the trigger doesn't go through. Watch again. That little dot there indicates the trigger is arriving. Now, naturally, if I increase the fills, let's say we increase it up to seven, and the length is eight, and pressing the left encoder to switch between them and turning the left encoder to adjust that parameter, we now have more triggers in our pattern. And if I click the right encoder to edit this and reduce the fills down to say three, we now have fewer. Now, if I increase the length by pressing the left encoder here and turning it to 12, those five triggers get spread out more across 12 beats. Now let's look at how we can use this Euclidean triggering mode to create a slightly interesting rhythmic pattern. What I've done is set envelope A as usual to the VCA input here on ripples. So envelope A is going to open the VCA so we can hear the oscillator. I've set the Euclidean length to 12 and I'll set the fill to seven. Then what I'm going to do is go over to envelope B. I have envelope A triggered off a pretty fast clock here. Envelope B is going to be connected to the filter frequency. We're going to dial down the filter, dial up the resonance. I'll have envelope B be a standard attack decay with a fast attack and a pretty slow decay. There's the decay is about 127, attack is 32. Then it's going to get triggered off trigger two, which I'm sending from PAMS here, which is a slightly slower clock, about half the speed of this clock here. I've set the Euclidean length to eight for envelope B and the fill is three. So we're going to get three triggers for every eight uh, beats that come through. And I went in and I had set the attack reset to SLP and I'm going to set the decay release reset to SLP. So if a new gate arrives, we'll reset the segment. Now let's take a listen. So you can hear that we're creating an interesting interplay between the rhythm on the oscillator, which is coming out of envelope A, which is pulsing away, and the filter envelope, which is firing on a different set of rhythms. And of course, we can go in and adjust the parameters. Like increasing the fill on the envelope for the filter frequency makes it fire more frequently. I can rotate the pattern so that the triggers occur on different beats. By turning the left encoder, I can change fill. Now that's four out of every eight, so a standard kind of rhythm. But of course, being ornament and crime, all of this is CV controllable. So let's scroll down here now. And we're going to place the envelope uh, fill value under CV control. So I'm going to scroll down here to E fill. E fill will map the input on CV1 to this parameter we have here, which is the number of triggers that are going to come through out of every set of beats coming through. Um, connect the output of my push over here. This will allow me to manually modulate how many fills, in other words, how many beats for the trigger to the envelope for the filter come through each time. There, when I have this at zero, you're only getting two. Now we get more frequent, more frequent again. Now let's combine the Euclidean triggers uh, for the oscillator and the filter with some drums. So we're going to put all four envelopes into Euclidean triggering mode. For the drums, I'm going to use envelope C to trigger a kick drum and envelope D to trigger a hi-hat on the disting. I'm running algorithm I7, which is a dual sample playback, which is ideal for drums. Envelope C is going to trigger the drums and I have it triggered by input four, trigger input four here from Pam. So I have a slightly different clock going into this. I have it set to an eight length pattern with three triggers. So you can see fill is three. There are three triggers in the kick drum pattern. The attack and decay shapes are gates so that they are simple on offs to trigger the drum. 
and I've mapped CV2 input to be fill, so I can vary the amount of drums that kick drums that come through by sending varying CV values here from push. Envelope D, we're going to use that to trigger hi-hats. It's the same setup. Triggered off trigger four. I've set it to length six. CV1 is modulating the amplitude, so I have a random sample and hold going here into CV1, and I have my amplitude dialed down, so we get a bit of variation in the amplitude of the gate trigger, which will change the volume coming out of here. So here I'm just adjusting the fill length. Remember we have envelope C for the kick, listening to the CV values. And if I think those fills are maybe there's a little bit too many fills coming through, I might want to just let's change the length. This is a great example of how you can add real variability to the rhythmic structure of what you're creating using Euclidean triggering envelopes on peaked and combined with varying clocks and adjusting the amplitude going into it, you can really humanize the beats and the music you're creating. I hope you found today's tutorial useful. I've covered a lot, so feel free to go back and watch it a few times. Don't forget to ask me some questions in the comments down below if there's anything that's not clear. Let me know what you'd like to see in future tutorials and hit subscribe so you can get notified when I publish new videos. Thanks for watching.